In this presentation, we will break out and allocate a lump sum purchase to its components, including land improvements and building. Situation here being that we have a purchase of land, building, and improvements for $110,000. We don't have an allocation for the $110,000 that is exact, meaning when we purchase the land, building, and improvements, we had a lump payment of $110,000. Oftentimes when we do that, we don't negotiate what the component com parts are of this 110. In other words, how much of the 110 is allocated to land, how much to uh, the improvements, and how much to building. So we need some other way to do that. We may have a property tax statement, which is typically based on some type of appraisal, based on often a breakout between the uh, land and the building. Uh, we also could have an appraisal. Now note that we, these appraisals, whatever the appraisal may be or where the appraisal may come from, will not often, usually will not, uh, equal the actual sales price of uh, the building. The appraisal may have happened before or after the building, and it is just an appraisal, just an estimate. But So it's all we have, however, is this appraisal. So if we had an appraisal on uh, the building and the land and the improvement, what we purchased as one lump, together for 110 and the appraisal said that the land was 35,000, the improvements 15,000, and the building 90,000, then that adds up to 140,000. That's gonna be our appraised value. So remember the cost was 110,000. We broke it out between the appraised value 35, 15, and 19 for the 140. Now what we need to do is try to use this appraisal to break out the 110. How could we do that? Well, we're going to do some type of ratio analysis. We're going to take the percentage or ratio. And to do that, we're just going to compare everything to the total. So 35,000, for example, divided by the total of 140,000 gives us 25%, 0.25, or 25%. The 15,000 divided by the 140 gives us uh, 10%, 10.71%. And then the 90,000 divided by the 140 gives us 62.29%. So we're going to do that same thing here with Excel. We'll use our formulas to do that. We're in cell C8. We're going to say equals and point to that 35,000 in B8 and then divide by point to the 140,000 in B11. And that'll give us our 25%. That one comes out exact, which is nice. We're going to do the same thing for uh, C9. Note, if you wanted to copy this down, by the way, it's possible to do that, but you would need to not change this cell. Note this top cell. Uh, you do want this to change because we want to move down to the 15. But this bottom cell, we don't want to change. So we could use absolute references. One is by using F4. You can just say F4. Put the dollar sign before the B, dollar sign before the L, and enter. So then if I copied this down and double check it, did it do what I want it to do? 15 divided by 140. So that's one way you can, you can use the absolute references, just for an example, for Excel. I'm going to delete it and do it this way, just so we can practice the calculation. The, in C9, this equals the 15,000 in B9 divided by the 140,000 in B11 and enter. Now note Excel is rounding that, that's 10.71 about. If we go to the home tab numbers and increase, it's actually a little bit more than that. So notice that uh, Excel will take the actual number here, the ratio, when we use that in calculation, not the 10.71, but the actual real number in that cell. We're going to do this once again in cell C10 by saying equals, pointing to the 90,000 divided by 140,000, giving us the 64.29. Again, that really, if we go to the home tab, numbers increase the decimal is a little bit different than that. So it's actually 64.28 and more change. Okay, so then we're going to sum this up. If we add this up, it should add up to 100%. If we did that in a calculator, of course, it would be 25 plus 10.71 plus 64.29, 100%. If we do that here, we're just going to use the sum function by saying equals sum, double click that sum function, 
highlight the 25 to the 64 and enter. There's our 100%. Now we're gonna take each of these columns and we're gonna multiply it times the actual amount, 110. So we have this nice ratio now, it adds up to 100, and we're just gonna multiply it times the amount to find each category, land, land improvements, and building. So I'm gonna put 110 into each area. I'm gonna do this with a formula up here. I'm gonna say equals the one above it. We could just type it in there, but I use formulas as much as possible. Equals the one above it. We're not gonna sum this up because we're gonna, this is the total, it wouldn't make sense to sum it up. We're just using it to multiply across. So then when we multiply across, we're gonna say that 110 total cost times the 25%. So 25% of the 110. So of course that would be 110 times 0.25. That gives us our 27,500. We'll do the same thing here in E9. This equals the 10.71% times the 110 and enter. We'll do the same for E10. This equals the 6429 times the 110 and enter. Now if we add these up, it should add up to our 110 once again. So we've got the 27.5 plus the 11.786 plus the 70.714, 110. We'll do that with our sum function. So within E11, we will say equals SUM, double click that sum function, highlight the 27,500 down to the 70,714. That will give us our 110. So what we've done is we've allocated this 110 and we've done so using the appraisal, although the appraisal did not add up to 110, by taking what the appraisal did have, breaking it down to ratios, percentages, and then multiplying them times 110. As long as we have something that adds up to 100%, we can then use those categories to break out the whatever number we have, the 110 in this case, using or by in accordance with that same ratio.